we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Needle on zero, blade on its back, needle on zero. And it is now linear. Stay tuned to find out how. Hi, Radio Mechanic here, and I've decided that I am going to dig into this thing and see if I can fix it. Now, you've, if you watched my last video on the fail, uh, the weights had fallen off the meter movement of my RCA Senior Volt almost. So we've disemboweled it. And over here we have most of the guts exposed. Very clean inside. This meter obviously was taken care of. Over here in the background we have the dial face and the cover for the meter and here we have the works. Now unfortunately when I got in here what I found out was the only weight still on it was here and the reason that that adjustable weight was on there is this heavy brass tail weight that's still or that's soldered on not still on soldered on the adjustment weight however was freely floating up and down the shaft of the needle and both of the side weights are missing now if you saw the previous video you saw on the face of the meter i had one of the weights inside this movement i moved things around cleaned up the bench cleaned off this area and ext was extremely careful disassembling the meter and the other weight evaporated I don't know where it went. Now I suspect, if you see the hole that's here, this is RCA's scheme. Oops, I shouldn't be putting fingerprints on the inside of this. You can't clean these. They have a special anti-static coating. RCA has a silly scheme with just a hole in the front, and the instructions tell you to put a pointed tool through the hole and adjust this mechanism back and forth to zero the meter really really a silly arrangement instead of having the little knob that most meters have I suspect moving things around to clean up the bench the little weight rolled out this hole somewhere and will never be found again and that doesn't much matter I don't have its mate anyway I did however find out what the procedure is for balancing these needles. I found it in an old, I think it's 1936 uh, amateur radio handbook. The way you're supposed to do it is put the meter absolutely level and set the zero adjust. Now what I did, it was when the scale was on there, I zeroed it, took the scale off because I had to have the scale off to have access in here. And I put a piece of tape with a mark where the zero mark was, so I have a reference point. Lay it flat on its back, adjust zero here. Then turn it vertical and rotate it so the needle is horizontal. When the needle is horizontal in this direction, you adjust the tail weight until it returns back to the mark you made over here at the zero point. Once that's accomplished, you rotate it so the needle is vertical and let's see if we can get this back in frame here rotate it so the needle is vertical and then adjust both of the side weights until we're back on the mark and as you can see or maybe not see it's pretty dark in this view I am way to the left in fact I'm up against the hard stop at this point so I'm gonna have to add some weight at least to that tang and try to bring the needle over and then, as they say in the instructions, rinse, repeat. And you go through that again. You would re-zero here, turn it vertical, re-zero zero it with the needle horizontal, then go this way and re-zero it on the side weights. And after two or three go-arounds of that, you should be able to move the meter around in all planes, all axes, and have it remain on zero. It remains to be seen. I adjusted this one by sliding it back and forth until I could transition between the two points and then put a drop of super glue on it. Now when some of that evaporates it's probably going to alter the weight as it hardens up. If that's the case I'll probably go find some nail varnish somewhere and touch a little nail varnish on there and wash, rinse, repeat until that's balanced. 
I don't know what I'm going to use for weights on the side. I have no idea what material they used, but something obviously dried up and allowed those weights to slide off both of the side tangs and the only reason that one's there is the brass piece on the end was soldered on and it captured it. So we'll let you know how I made out here shortly. Okay after quite a bit of playing around I've managed to get this balanced on the first axis that is with the uh, meter assembly vertical and the needle horizontal and it was uh, as Big Clive would say, fudgery, I believe is the term he used, it means you've got to fudge with it quite a bit. And I'm hoping if I point in here with the toothpick, you can see, you see the needle move? Just getting close to this thing. There's the first weight. And that was completely loose. I balanced it as well as I could, put a drop of super glue on it, and slid it into position. Let it dry for about an hour, and as I'm talking, I can see the needle swinging up and down. As the super glue dried and the volatile parts evaporated, the balance changed ever so slightly. So then I took a little bit of RTV or a silicone sealant and put just a tiny, tiny bit on the end of the toothpick, and I began to apply tiny, tiny little dabs here to this counterweight. And after I'd done that, it came into balance. Now I have to turn the meter the other way. In other words, with the needle vertical. I'll have to have the needle in this axis here. And try to attempt to put weight on the two side wings, or the side bars of the balance assembly. I do not have the original weights. They disappeared. I broke open a light bulb, thinking the coiled filament of a light bulb being made out of tungsten uh, I could probably cut it up and slip it on, but the diameter was too small. I do have some high wattage lamps I could cut up and get the filaments out of, but I really don't want to waste those. So I think I'm just going to try the RTV trick on these two. And uh, we'll try that and get back to you. Okay, progress is slow. This is extremely delicate work. The silicon rubber was not heavy enough. I would have had to put far too much on the small protrusion that's available for adding weight to. So I'm going back to the uh, lamp filament theory. And I have some defunct uh, fog lamp lamps. These are 50 watt, 12 volt. And I also have a tail lamp here that has a 50 watt brake light filament in it. This is brand new. I bought these for the motorcycle years ago thinking the brake light would stand out nicely and they do. The problem being with these installed in the tail light, if you have to sit in traffic on a hill for any length of time they get so hot they melt the tail light lens. <laughs> so we don't use those anymore. But uh, I hope you can see this needle. It's off center from the mark that's up here and it is hard against this hard stop. You can see it bounce on the hard stop. It's going to take a fair amount of weight to counter that and get it balanced. Now lamp filaments are made out of tungsten and tungsten is a very dense heavy metal and it's of the right shape. It's in a coil so if I can find one of these it will fit over the small stub that is on the side and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not there's a small wing right here or protrusion and there's one on the other side but I need to add a considerable considerable blah, easy for me to say amount of weight to this side to bring this needle back over into the center position and, and counterbalance it so I'm going to go off camera here a little bit break these lamps open carefully try to preserve the filament and We'll see what the results are here in a minute or two. Okay, the 15 watt filament was just a little bit too small in diameter. The 50 watt filament, that's 5-0, was ever so slightly large. But being tungsten, you can see it in there sitting on the uh, crossbar. Being tungsten, it was heavy enough. Uh, it's about half the filament length I cut off. And it has brought the needle into balance with the needle pointing up vertically. I put an ever so small amount of silicone rubber on the shaft and then slid the spring in on over the top of it. 
the silicone sets up slowly which allows you to move the, the weight back and forth and get the balance and now I'll just let it sit for a few hours and let the silicone set up and the spring hopefully will stay where it is. I may even put a drop of super glue on it later. But it is extremely, this is an extremely delicate operation. Every time you breathe, every time you move, just walking through the room, the needle makes wild swings. It gives me uh, a new earned or new, newly learned respect for the people who built these. They must have done it under a hood of some kind, uh, perhaps like a glove box to keep stray air currents away. So I imagine they were probably looking either through a microscope or through some sort of magnifying glass built into the hood because trying to do this out in the open air is just excruciating. Of course, I imagine if you've done two or three hundred of them, it gets easier with time, but it is definitely not, uh, not something I would want to do for a living. We'll let this set up and we'll come back. All right, I believe we're on the road to success here. Laying flat, we've got zero, and I, I'm not very steady, but there we go, zero. Standing vertical, it's on the same position. Standing horizontal, and with the needle vertical, again, returns to zero. Hopefully, when I get this back together, the meter will now be linear across the scale. If it doesn't, I'll probably go jump off the roof. No, I'll throw the meter off the roof. Old girlfriend of, one, of mine once said, I don't get suicidal, I get homicidal. And she wasn't kidding. So we're going to put this back together. I don't think you need to watch me solder everything back together, but we'll get it back together and we'll see what it looks like once the meter movement's in. And we're back. Now it's time to find out, are we hero or zero? This will be done live in front of you. And let's see, 50 volt range. It's 25 volts. Uh, oh, I should zero this before we start because everything's moved around. It was mechanically zeroed before we started. Boy, this zero control is touchy. Okay, that's zeroed. Now it's probably going to need calibration, but let's see what it does here. Whoa, that's almost on 25. That's a little high, that's 25.4. Twenty-five point two, twenty-five point. Let's bring it down. Okay, it's still off by about three hundred millivolts. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's a heck of a lot better than it was. And it isn't calibrated yet. That may be part of the problem. Let's turn it up to 50 volts, which is the calibration point. There's 50.76. Come on. I'm looking over here at this meter to uh, dial in the voltage exactly. And we can even get another digit here. If I go six store number of digits there we go and we'll turn that down 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 whoops too far i'm probably being way too fussy with this that's close enough and yes we're out of calibration just a whisker which stands to reason Try not to get bit here. I should be doing this with an insulated tool. You might get to see me fry on camera. Am I adjusting the right one? Yep, DC plus. 
and it could probably go just a whisker more let's be careful where I reach Oop, too far how does that look straight on pretty close let's wind it down to 25 volts again It's 24.457, 8, 9, 25.002, and it's probably 100 millivolts low. That's a whole lot better than the volt and a half it was low before. And that's probably within the specification of the meter, although I do have to say I think my Heath kit one is a little bit more accurate. But I'll live with that. 100 millivolts versus a volt and a half. That's a substantial improvement over what it was before. So there you have it. The secret was using the tungsten lamp filaments as weights. Uh, that's probably what they're using in the meter originally because if you look at this picture here, this sure looks like a double wound filament. It's very common to see filaments that are made out of twisted wire and then turned into a coil like this. They probably buy them from a, a lamp factory and cut them to length and use them for weights because tungsten is very dense and heavy. Since these were missing, I just broke up an old lamp I had out, out in the garage and used the filament. The fine tuning was done with uh, silicone rubber RTV. Any sealant you could use the white, the clear, wouldn't matter. The trick is take a toothpick and you use just the tiniest and I mean incredibly small little dots of silicone once the thing is close it takes almost nothing to bring it in so we had a meter that was basically junk it's back online now when I lay it on its back the needle stays in the same place it's the, the zero doesn't drift so it acts just like my other meter over here I'm very happy with that uh, so if you have one of these and it's behaving badly when you lay it down on its back the needle is swinging off zero that's the cure and if you're curious about what led me into this watch the other video that's titled uh, senior volt almost fail that walks you through the diagnostic process and what led me into finding out it was a mechanical problem or led led me to totally convinced myself it was a mechanical problem. I was pretty sure it was. That's it. We're going to wrap it up. Hope you found it useful. Hope somebody out there found it useful. Please subscribe, give us a like, and we'll make some more of these later on. See ya.